So can you edit photo and video on Apple's cheapest M4 MacBook Air? Well, for the last two weeks, I've been using this $999 laptop to find out. So let's talk about it. And big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Now, before we get into this M4 MacBook Air, I want to talk about my motivation for this video. You see, when I started my creative journey making YouTube videos and photography, like most people out there, I didn't have a lot of extra money. So I would typically go with the cheapest MacBook and laptop options out there and unfortunately in 2017 I bought this right here a base model MacBook and it was the worst laptop I've ever used after two months it was crashing it couldn't handle Premiere or Lightroom or large photo files it was kind of a nightmare and I felt like I wasted a thousand dollars but I just made it work because I didn't have any other options and eventually I was able to upgrade to this M1 MacBook Pro a couple years ago and I absolutely love it and it's been a workhorse and dream computer for me. Now I recognize that not everyone is privileged enough to spend $5,000 on a laptop, so my goal in this video is to find out if this $999 MacBook Air is a good cost-effective option for people who are looking to edit photo and video. So I want to start on the photography side of things. Just to put it bluntly and keep this kind of short, this is the best quote unquote cheap MacBook ever made for photography. And here is why. Because this has 16 gigs of internal memory, you are getting a huge upgrade from any previous MacBook Air or any other base model MacBook that has come out in recent memory. Most of them were eight gigs and that is where you'd run into issues like I had with my 2017 MacBook. You just fill up that internal memory so quickly but with 16 you have much more processing power plus that m4 chip so this laptop handled large Hasselblad raw files with no issue no lag the import and export time was very similar to my m1 MacBook there was no issue with taking a photo from Lightroom bringing it into Photoshop editing it in Photoshop saving it I could edit photos while listening to a YouTube video long story short the upgrades to the chip being the m4 chip and that upgrade to the internal memory on the base model Model makes this an incredibly cost-effective and great option for photographers. I really can't believe that laptops are getting this good. Someone can just go buy the basic level MacBook Air and have professional level photo editing capability. But there is one slight issue that happens with this base model, and that is the storage on the machine. With this being a 256 gig laptop, that's all you can put on here. Photo files continue to get bigger and bigger. I already mentioned processing the Hasselblad files on this machine. Realistically, if I went out and did two or three photo shoots with this Hasselblad and had maybe 400 photos each shoot, I'm looking at a machine that no longer has any storage. And if you're someone using a slightly higher megapixel camera, like most of the photography cameras of today, you're also going to run into that issue of filling up the storage very quickly on this base model. So you're going to need to have some type of file storage method in place. You're going to need a NAS system if you're really serious. You're going to need a Lacey drive, a Samsung T7 drive, something that allows you to put your files somewhere else so you're not churning up all the storage on your machine. Now, the drawback to doing this is the fact that this is a MacBook Air. It's designed to be convenient. The size of it is great. It's extremely light. You can just throw it in your bag. You don't even know it's there. It's almost similar to like older iPads. If you had one of those, that's what it feels like to me at least. And that convenience is what makes this so special. But when you need an external drive and you have to bring that external drive out to shoots with you, you have to bring it to a coffee shop with you, you sort of eliminate some of that convenience that comes with such a light and such a small laptop. And Apple is very aware of this. They know that this laptop is about convenience and that's why they charge so much for you to upgrade the storage on this machine. I can't remember off the top of my head, but you have to pay what, $200 to go to around 500 gigs of storage when you could spend $100 on a T7 drive and have one terabyte of storage that you just plug in. So that right there is sort of up to you to decide what's your priority. Do you care about convenience. If you do, you might want to upgrade a little bit with Apple just to have a little bit more storage. But if you don't care at all, you'll save a ton of money by just going out and buying an external drive. 
Now, besides that, I love everything about this for photography. I can't say the same thing for video, which we'll talk about in a second after I thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, one of the best investments I made early in my career was my website, evanramp.com, built on Squarespace. I built that website in 2017 before Squarespace even worked with me on this channel, and it's been a game changer. Squarespace allows me to have customers contact me through a contact page. I built a portfolio that is beautiful, that showcases my work. I can sell all my physical and digital products through their e-commerce tools, and I even hosted a free course on Squarespace using their course tools. So if you're someone who's looking to sell anything online, you're looking to have customers find you and reach out to you, or you're looking to build out a course and monetize the information that you have, no one makes it easier than Squarespace. You see, Squarespace has award-winning templates that are beautiful, they're easy to design even if you have no experience, they're just drag and drop, they have a tool called Fluid Engine that's incredible, and they have AI tools as well to help you design your website. And and on this channel, I have multiple videos breaking down a number of different ways I use Squarespace. I'll link that in the description down below under a tab called Website Resources. So here's what I recommend. Go to squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial, follow one of those videos, start building out your trial site, and when you're ready to sign up, use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout. That's squarespace.com slash evanramp to start a free trial, and use code evanramp to save 10% at checkout. Big thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video and being such a big part of my business. On the video side of things, this is where it gets a little tricky with the M4 MacBook Air. I found that with editing video, when I did more basic stuff, like I'm working on a new program where I teach people how I do my photography, it's called Simplifying Modern Photography, it's gonna be $45, it's like three hours long. I'll link that in the description down below if you wanna sign up for the wait list, but I was editing one of those lessons and it was an in-studio lesson. So I was just sitting here talking and this M4 MacBook Air handled it with ease. It was no issue, it was a 4K file, there were no dropped frames, everything worked the way I expected it to work. And when you're editing something like an Instagram Reel or YouTube Short or TikTok on the M4 MacBook Air, it performs very well also. Being that it was a short file, I didn't see any issue, but when I brought in a really large video file, a YouTube video that has 8K clips, 4K clips, sound effects, transitions, music, all this stuff happening, I did notice some dropped frames on the M4 MacBook Air in Premiere Pro. Now to be honest, this didn't surprise me at all. I mean, processing some giant YouTube video on a machine like this, didn't seem practical, but part of me had some wishful thinking, hoping that it would handle it fine, especially after seeing people like MKBHD saying, this thing will be able to handle 8K files, no issue. There was a little bit of an issue. There was some lag, there were a couple dropped frames when I'd move the cursor in Premiere from one spot to another. Sometimes it didn't always move smoothly and I'd have to reload the clip. What became an issue was the rendering and processing and export times of that file. The export times were extremely high on the M4 MacBook Air for these large video files. We're talking 30 minutes to an hour, they were taking a long time to render, whereas with my M1 MacBook Pro, I can export a video in under five minutes. So that right there was the huge drawback for me. It was that time element. When you invest into a higher level laptop and spend more money, you're investing in time. You're getting time back because you can write and render files so much faster and unfortunately Unfortunately, that is the limitation on the M4 MacBook Air. So to answer my question at the beginning of the video, is this M4 MacBook Air a good cost-effective option for photo and video editing? On the photography side, it is the best cost-effective option ever made by Apple. Just point blank period, this thing is awesome for photo editing. It should be able to handle mostly everything you throw at it. I can't imagine a scenario where it's going to have problems. On the video side, for basic video, more low level stuff, talking head stuff, short form video, this does very well. Like this is a great option for people getting into video and just starting out. Maybe you're just trying to figure out if you even like doing video this is something great. But if you're someone who's already making video, you have clients maybe that you're servicing or maybe you're making YouTube videos, you're hustling, trying to grow a business, this is unfortunately going to start having its drawbacks relatively quickly for those high-end video files. So I would recommend to someone who is a little more serious on the video side, upgrade pieces of this. 
upgrade maybe the internal memory or go ahead and just get yourself a MacBook Pro. It's going to be more money, but it's going to be worth it in the long run when it comes to processing those large video files. But with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on the M4 MacBook Air. Do you have one? Do you love it? Do you hate it? If you're someone more on the video side, what do you recommend to people who are looking for a good cost effective option? My goal with this video is to just help people who are in the same position that I was in years ago when I just didn't have a lot of money, but I wanted the best option. And unfortunately for me, I made a couple mistakes there. So I'm trying to help people avoid that. So any insight you might have is definitely welcome in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you are not yet, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.